Okay. So today, Conversations with Coco is sitting down with Rod Hughes, the owner operator president of <laughs> I, I, i'm not sure if i'm gonna say it right but is it kc cigars kasi cigars yeah. and it's mm. so cute they're named after is named after your daughters yeah yeah named after my kids my oldest daughter name is k that's where the ka come from and then my youngest child is her name is natalia simone so it's the si out of her middle name okay so did you did you always want to start or own your own cigar line? No, I'm not going to even lie. It fell into my lap. Um, I have a podcast called Cigars with Friends. And so we'll be on there, you know, we chop it up, smoke cigars and just talk whatever whatever the topic is. And I end up coming across a guy who ran a, a, a tobacco plant and me just being, you know, novice to it. I was, uh, I thought he was in the States. So I was trying to get him to be a sponsor to my podcast. So as we got to kicking it, I noticed that he was in Nicaragua. So it, it didn't make sense for him to sponsor our podcast. It didn't benefit them. Right. So, you know, the entrepreneur, the, the light bulb went off. And I was like, well, uh, what would it take for me to start my own brand through you? Mm -hmm. And then we got the networking. It took about six months to finalize. And then we launched in January of 2022. And then we officially launched, like far as the LLC and the business part in uh, February of 2022. So we're a little over a year in. Okay. So did you already have in mind what you wanted your cigar blends to be when you when you approached him initially no not initially because like i say like i've been smoking cigars since 2017 so i didn't know like the that side of the game i was just a consumer you know what i mean so once i got with him and being that it was hard for me to go to him that he was sending me different blends back and forth we that's why it took so long we doing this through the mail and once i got to what i liked and then i, then I didn't want to just focus on what i like so i had like other people try them out different blends because I got three blends and I know everybody palette is not like mine. So I just make sure I got something for everybody. And that's kind of how we got it. And that's how we tailored the blends. Okay. So your, when I, when I looked on your website, your blends are medium to full. So mm -hmm. do, are you a medium to full smoker or do you like the more full body smokes? Yeah. I'm like, I got actually the, the, the uh, strongest one is what I'm smoking right now. The Detroit It's a medium plus. So it's okay. closer to a full. Like I fluctuate sometimes. I might try something because I like to keep trying them because I'm still learning as I go as well. But I this is my go-to to fool you. Yeah. Okay. So how did you come up with the names of your cigars? Because you have th three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, three blends. It's the uh, Big Red, the Granny Randall, and the Detroit. So anything I do, I try to make it uh, mean something to me, right? So of course the name is after my kids. Okay. And each stick is named after something. So the Granny Randall is my grandmother that passed on. So I named that. So just kind of keeping her name alive, right? Okay. And the Big Red is my father's name. He passed in August of 2020. And so that's just keeping his name alive. So I just, and then of course I'm from Detroit. So even though I live in Arizona, I'm from Detroit. So I just made one to Detroit just to rep where I'm from. Okay. So you said, you mentioned that you have a podcast. And yes. so did you ever consider the uh, using the podcast as the catalyst for marketing your cigars. Oh, or of course. Did it just kind of sort of happen in reverse? The podcast well, and then the cigar. podcast. The podcast is already there. We I've been doing podcasts um off and on since 2008, but we got like we started. I started a network in uh 2019, the Realist Radio Network, where we have multiple podcasts, and so still finding the way of how. Because I was doing two podcasts, and I was like, you know what, I could just consolidate it into one. And that's when Cigars with Friends came up. So as Cigars with Friends was building, we was promoting everybody else stuff. And we was doing it for free, just on the strength that we were smoking their cigars. They didn't pay us. We actually bought the cigars, except for the um, BMF was starting a cigar line. So they sent us a bunch of 263 cigars. Those are the only ones that actually sent us cigars to smoke. Oh. And so other than that, no. So when I got my brand, it was just like, made it was just made sense like every podcast is going to be sponsored by Casa, and we're going to run a, a commercial in between the middle of the podcast so we kind of went podcast first then the cigar launched in marketing is like what i do for a living is uh i'm a photographer so i do digital media we do business cards flyers websites wedding whatever so all that it already was there like we production like i make my own shirts everything is in-house and so the marketing aspect just was common sense once i had my own cigar brand then we just stopped smoking everybody else's like if you're my guest I don't make you smoke my cigars. You can bring on what you want to bring on. You know what I mean? It's your preference. But I'm gonna be smoking the Kasi and we gonna and I'm gonna go definitely shout it out and plug it. So in Arizona, is there a big cigar culture 
where yes. you are, it's, where it's, you it's, live it's at. A, it's a huge culture. Like the whole cigar culture in a whole, you know, is big. If you if you're on the outside looking in, you wouldn't even notice it. But once you dive into it, it's 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 crazy. But here is big as well. It's a lot of cigar lounges. I'm in process of uh, getting into Churchill's uh, cigar lounge in uh, Scottsdale. And I'm doing some other networking with uh, Puro and Chandler. So I'm doing some things like I'm at the point right now. I want to be in the cigar bar, but I don't have to be. Okay. Because, you know, you're competing with brands that's been around forever. So for them to really go in and look at for mine, it's got to be me pushing them there or the the person running the um, humidor actually letting them know. So as, as the name grow, I'll be more concerned on pushing it into bars. But right now, if we get it, it's good. If not, we, it ain't going to hurt us. Okay, so as far as that, when you say you're not, you know, is that's not your number one priority right now. So do you do a lot of live events where you are a vendor or pop up uh, yeah, that's what, that's, shop type of thing? Right now, our biggest thing is the website. The website does great on sales. And especially when I travel, like when I went to Detroit this weekend to shoot, I took like 100 cigars with me. And I'm out there, you know, out the trunk type hustling them then. But we're working on doing more vendor events and pop-ups. I've been in networks with Harley Davidson Chandler to do some of their promo events. They do like one or two events a month. So I'm hoping to get on at least one a month. And um, any vendor event that I feel that's, you know, makes sense. Like I'm not going to go do a vendor event and they doing crafts and, you know, Etsy type stuff. Because there's really no cigar stuff that's probably going to be there. But right. if it's like a motorcycle event, a car show, a beer bash or something like that, I'm trying to jump into those so I'm and I'm doing traveling. I'm in networking with a lady. Actually, hit me up last night. She's doing a 50th birthday for somebody, and they want a cigar vendor. So if we can get these numbers right, I'm gonna fly back to Detroit and do that. So we we're willing to travel and everything. Like we're working on coming to North Carolina to do this golf tournament. But like I say, everything is talk right now until we right. you know we do contracts and deposits. So when you when you look at traveling for this, are is are you a, like a one man show? Or, yeah, or right do you now, have like a team of people that are helping you out? Or, you know, as I like to say, your team can be your family because if they're traveling with you, I'm sure they're yeah. helping you out. Majority of, the, majority of the time, it's just me. Now, if I fly in and have to do an event in Detroit, then of course I can get help. There's no problem because I got people that I make a phone call. My my people are going to pull up, throw on a t-shirt and get to work. Now, if I have to go to North Carolina or Florida or something like that, most likely I'll be by myself. Unless it's a big event where I think I need somebody, then I'll fly somebody else to meet me there. You would take one of my family members or one of my partners. Because, like, I have, uh, like I said, I do photography. So I have, like, other photographers that shoot with me. If I get a wedding that recalls two two photographers, then I got, like, six guys that I got on deck. Well, really, five guys and a girl that I have on deck. And I know that they arrive with me on this brand. You know, whatever I do, because that's just how we do. So okay. it just depends on the size of the event. If it's something small or intimate that I think I can handle by myself, but if I think I need another person, then the family going to even jump on or one of my people. So are you um, looking at doing, you know, PCA or any of the big trade shows? Yeah, that's, I think we're going to work on that for next year because PCA is going on right now in Vegas. Well, it just went on in Vegas. I was supposed to go down there and link up with uh, Definition Cigars. Mm -hmm. One of the owners of Definitions is like one of my mentors. And, um, but I had got booked. So it was either go network or go pick up some money. You know what I mean? So I had to, right. I had to, you know, I had to make that decision to go to Detroit and do what I do what I do. So, right. so it, I'm working on it. And um, I got some plugs, a couple brands, like shouts out to Four River Cigars out in uh, North Carolina. They in Salisbury, like 30 minutes outside of Charlotte. They're doing their thing. And we're trying to put together an event where we all come together and just have like a block party, a cigar smoke out. So I'm down to travel. I'm down, I want to get into these cigar weeks. Only problem with like most of the cigar weeks, they're actually during the week. Right. And um, I'm a father first. So I'm, I take my daughter to school every day. So <laughs> if it ain't on a weekend or in the summertime, it's hard for me to make those weekly events. Right. But next year, we're going to make a big, a big focus on hitting almost every event possible. OK, so and I was going to ask you about that. So with a lot of new cigar brands coming out, how mm -hmm. are you making a, 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 I guess, a niche for yourself with so many i mean i think every day there's at least three or four new cigar brands coming out well think like that i'm used to it the same thing was when i first started photography everybody anybody that got a, a decent camera thought they was a photographer right so you go <laughs> right. i mean it's just it's just being real so right. it's just being, being realistic about it so it doesn't matter to me because my thing is this if we go to walmart right now you go to the bread out how many different brands of bread you're gonna see right you're going to pick what you want, though. So my thing is just to do me. And most people are not buying into the cigars. They're buying into me. And then if they like the cigars, they come back. So I'm not really focused on anybody else. I'm not. We don't have to compete. We can collab. 
You know what right. I mean? Because what, what I got, you don't have, and what and vice versa. So I don't really look at them as competition or as a burden. I, I want everybody to win. Get your money, do your hustle. But I'm gonna do what I do, and if you like it, you are gonna rock with me. And then I'm 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 a hundred percent sure if you try them, you are gonna come back. My so, my return rate is real high. So out in Arizona, um, are you do you frequent a lot of the cigar lounges? Yeah, I circulate them. Um, um, my biggest thing is just this is what I do. So I go to cigar lounge, right? I purchase two cigars from the humidor because I always want to patronize the business. But I always smoke my cigars in the in the in the uh, cigar bar. So I'm taking pictures for my social media. I'm talking to people, and you know, as you talk in the cigar bar, what you smoking? Boom! Now I'm introducing myself to them. Now they either gonna purchase, or I might even give them a stick to try. Right. And then guess what? They usually come back. Hey, I like that stick, man. Blah blah blah. Can we meet up? Or what's your website? And I keep you know, business card. I keep the QR code on my phone. You can scan for my contact. So I'm always networking. Like whenever you see me, like today, I got on a Kasi shirt. I'm always wearing something that I own. Okay. A Kasi shirt, the podcast t-shirt, photography t-shirt, because there's no bigger promotion than me. I'm six foot seven, 300 pounds. So when you see me, you're going to look at me. You understand? Right. And right. I can see people, even if they don't ask, I can see their eyes reading my shirt. You okay. know what I mean? So I'm just always networking, but I try to hit as many of them as I can yeah, I might, I might take a break from it and then pop back because I don't want to be like I'm overdoing it, you know? Okay. So but do yeah, you have a favorite? Like, do you have a favorite cigar lounge that that's the one here? that you're going to go to at least once a week? Um, Here, I would say out of the ones I've been to, I like Puro the best, honestly. I just like the vibe. Um, Then it's a restaurant right up under. You can order food. They bring it up. I just think I like I like that because I'm not a drinker. I don't drink at all. So, I, you know, I'm more of an eater and uh iced tea or you know pineapple juice while i'm smoking mm -hmm. and um i think that just fits my me personally you know what i mean okay. so i'd rather be able to just that grab something to eat chill talk talk my stuff and and do my thing so right now that's my favorite that's, here that's very interesting because a lot of cigar smokers do they do drink but there are equal amount that don't drink and for you you said you drink iced tea or pineapple juice now how does that mix with your cigar does it make it more mm, mellow or more fruity i think the pineapple juice i think the pineapple juice make it a little fruitier but the iced tea kind of just blends well with it you know what i mean to me but see i never was a drinker so i couldn't even see like when people be like what do i pair it with and i just be honest with them like yo well, that's your preference i don't i never i drunk twice in my life my 21st birthday and my 22nd birthday okay that was 20 years ago you know it's just not for me you know it was never my i'm the life of the party sober so it just never really was my thing right and so that's how i get with that but like i say it's, it's to each his own but like the iced tea is really what i usually drink depending on where i'm at you know some people okay. don't you know here sometimes they just they sell unsweetened tea which is weird to me but so i go sprite or you know pineapple juice Okay, see, I'm gonna have to try the pineapple juice. I've I've had all juices with my cigar. I never had the pineapple juice because even though I do drink, I don't drink a lot during the week. So when I'm smoking at home during the week, I wanna I like to try different things. So today on the menu will be pineapple juice. Yeah, check and it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how you like it. <laughs> I, I certainly will. So when you see moving forward in your brand. What do you see for next year, two years, and then five years? Um, next year, it's just uh, building up the customer base. That's the big thing because we can have everything we need. We got merch, we got cigars, we got whatever you need, but without people to, to get it to, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. So focusing on building up the clientele, just keep pushing it out, keep advertising, keep going to wherever you can to get your name out there. And um, two years, I would say, getting starting to get into more lounges. And I think the five-year plan is to be a name where people recognize what people go into the lounge ask for like, Hey, do y'all carry Kasi brand? So that's the way that we got it to the point where if they can't, they don't want to wait to order. They want to go get it while they out and about okay. and we just keep growing from there. So let, let me ask you, what was the biggest mistake that you made when you the, started your cigars? The biggest mistake I would say, hey, hmm, that's a good question. Um, information. Right. So I kind of I'm the type of person like I'm not, I'm not afraid to fail. So if I jump into something, I'm going in head first. And I think I should have set back maybe another month or two and just did a little bit more research on how to propose it to cigar lounges, um, just things like that. Because once I met my mentor, like a lot of things I was doing wrong, he corrected instantly. And I seen a change within 30 to 45 days. Wow. So, like I, you know, what I mean, so just like I was doing um, I was about to do a deal with a bar in Detroit and on consignment which a lot of people try to start off you doing. And he just was like, no, don't do that. 
Uh, he was like, sell it to them. You, you're, you're, you're not, if you, cause if they get it on consignment, what's their motivation to push your brand? They don't have any skin in the game, which I didn't even think about. Like I say, I'm new to this. I'm used to being just a straight seller. I don't have to need, need a middleman or a, a, a storefront to sell with other products that I sold. So I was like, and he, which, which was a small thing, but it was a big thing at the same time. Right. And, um, so he taught me does, you know, have a wholesale price that you sell to the cigar lounge from. They want them to try to make 40%. So you want to make it where they got a chance to 40% markup. That's still close to your sale price where y'all all making money, which made a lot of sense. But like I say, I didn't think of that at first. So I think that's why initially I jumped off of trying to get into the lounges. And that's when he kind of slowed me up. And I thought about it. Let me pace it. I think that was the biggest thing. I was I was guns ablazing to come out. But now I sat back and I do better on my own without the lounges. But if you want to do business with me, we're going to do business. Like I had a meeting with a, a lady. And I don't want to, I don't like throwing race out there, but I don't think she took me serious because I was black. I'm just being honest with you. Mm -hmm. I come to the meeting. She didn't even show. So I'm, uh, I don't, you know, schedule, reschedule my day to come around. And so I talked to her, oh, this came up, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, well, let's reschedule for next week. I'm going to give you one chance. We go to the reschedule. This time I didn't show up. I called first. Like, hey, just confirm that we're still meeting today. Oh, I'm getting ready to go to Vegas. It was a show coming up in Vegas. I got to go to this, da, da, da. But you knew that when we we scheduled. So I just never reached back out to him. So I happened to be in the lounge one day and she recognized me. Now she's coming up lightweight, kissing my ass because she knows she was wrong. But right. now I'm cool on y'all. Once You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I, like I say, I, I want to be in a cigar bar, but I don't need to be. Right. You know what I mean? So it just just little things like that. But I think that was my biggest thing, just ready to go. I'm so used to just being, hey, when I'm doing something, let's go. Right. And just have a little bit of patience. And, you know, but now, like I said, that was a year ago. But now right. I think we were all right. And, when, you know, I, I think a lot of brands get into, like you said, they want to be into the lounges. They want to be everywhere. Yeah. And sometimes you don't have to be everywhere to be successful. Exactly. So, for her to treat that business meeting as if it was just some casual, let's meet up for a couple of drinks or, I mean, even though you don't drink, but like, yeah. you, know, oh, well, you, you know, if we meet up, we meet up. If we don't, we don't. It's not a big deal. My, my, um, I guess kudos to you is you try, you were the bigger person. Cause see my petty would have kicked in. I would have been yeah, like, because, oh, you cut, oh, you recognize me? Is that because you missed the meeting with me twice? Like my petty would have kicked in. So how do you handle when people don't take you seriously? Well, I look at it like this. I just I can't take it personally because personally, I'm I, if I take it personally and get mad, I'm a different animal. And then it, the industry is big, but it's small, especially if I'm on the local. So if I snap on or go off on her, what if she in communication with another bar? Oh, yeah, I tried to do he was this, you know how we get to tag anyway that we aggressive or whatever, right. whatever, angry black man, whatever. So now you saw you saw in the game for everybody else for me to do business with. So I had to look at it like that. I'm playing chess. So I'm just gonna think it out. You know, I just I take I don't take it personal. It's business. It didn't work out. I don't have to deal with you. Cause like I said, at the end of the day, I don't need you. A lot of people want to be seen. Like you want to be in a scar bar to be seen, but if, if you're not making no money off of it, what it doesn't make sense. Owning hundred percent of nothing is is nothing. Right. That's so true. I looked at it like that. So I just I just didn't let my emotions get into it. I just hey, it is what it is. It didn't work out. I'm gonna move on. And oh. eventually, eventually, you have to come see me. Yeah. And then that's when the real petty come in because then the price right. gonna change. And then you know right. my terms gonna change. So you know what I'm saying? When you think about it, like you always say, on your way up, treat the people the same because you might see them on the way down. Right. Right. So you you mentioned you know that you've been smoking for a while so do you remember the very first cigar you smoked and who introduced you to cigars uh my brother 2017 i came down 17 17 i came down to arizona to visit my brother we is doing this uh pat tillman it's like a little charity run or whatever and we pretty much just use it as a reason for the fellas to get together and uh, we went to the cigar bar. We went to the Fox Cigar Lounge in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I smoked a Rocky Patel. That was the first cigar I ever smoked. And so did you instantly fall in love or or was it like, mm, let me do it again? It was a slow process. Like, it was cool because I never smoked them. You know what I mean? I used to go to lounges and hang out, but I never smoked the drinks. That just never was my, I was a, a, a basketball player. I was an athlete. So that was always my thing. I never wanted to put nothing in my body that would slow my progress. So it, it was like the first, it was cool though. It wasn't like I didn't like it, but I didn't love it either. Okay. So fast forward next year, we come back for the same thing. 2018, we right back at the cigar lounge. Now I'm a little more into it. And I start taking a liking to it. And so, I, but I, but 
to me, I'm I'm always smoking with somebody. I rarely just smoke by myself, right? So I was really only smoking when I came to Arizona with them. And um, when I flew, when I ended up moving to Arizona, and then I switched my podcast to Cigars with Friends, and I was really smoking and really really diving all the way into it, and then it just kind of opened me up to the whole culture because I was in a small a small place of the cigar world, but now I'm just we we in here. Okay, so when your podcast, Smoking with Friends, are, with is friends. it the same people all the time, or do you have like different people that you that you no, just no. run into it, and be like, hey, let's it chop it up? And it, no, it rotates. I'm the only only uh, person that's going to be there every every time. Okay. Yeah, it's called Cigars with Friends. Yeah, so um, I might have some college friends. I might have somebody I want to interview. I might have business. We talk a lot. I mean, I would say 65% of it is entrepreneurship, just motivating, you know what I mean? Then okay. we get some political stuff. Like I got a cousin out of, uh, he's from Detroit, he lives in Illinois, probably one of the smartest people I know in the world. Like when I tell you he's heavy, he heavy. So when something political come up, that's who we go with. Like he literally called me last week because I've been so busy. He wanted to talk about the affirmative action, you know what I mean, okay. ruling. So it, it can go anywhere, but I'm the only figure on the show. So it switch up every episode. Okay. Okay. So when you, l let's talk about cigars with friends. So do you see this continuing because you, it, is your nine to five job, the photography, or do you actually have another nine to five job? No, nah, no, nah, I own Profit Rising Photography. I'm an entrepreneur. I, don't, I haven't punched a clock in maybe 20 when I was still in college, like coming home on college summer. So no, nah, no nine to five. This is it. So that's why I have like, I call myself the serial entrepreneur. So um, it's a balancing act. So far as being from Detroit, like I'm still, my market is still Detroit. I haven't really tapped into Arizona with the photography as like I would want. But so from March to September is like my biggest ones of photography. That's the wedding season in Detroit. Okay. So when it slows down, that's when other stuff pick up. Like we do t-shirts, like we about to get ready to do a big family reunion order. We do, like I say, graphics. I got to do two flyers today. Um, uh, you know, we just make stuff. We, we do RIP, memorabilia stuff. So it's a balancing act. So when this is banging and when it slow down, I got something else that can kind of balance it out. Okay. So no, no nine to five, this is it. But the podcast is always, like I said, I've been doing it since 2008, but I took, got back on the series in 2019 and started my own network. So okay. I want to be able, to, I'll be able to talk forever. You know, physically, I'm not going to be able to be at weddings on my feet for 12 hours forever. You know what I mean? Right. So these are all things that I can do past photography, but photography is is the main thing. That's the, the breadwinner for okay. all the companies that I own. So, okay, you have two daughters. So yes. would you encourage them when they turn 18 to try cigars? Nope. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't push nothing on them. If they want to try it, I'd rather them try it with me and we go from there. I can school them on them. Okay. Um, I think my, my oldest, I think she would try them just because she just, just, she's older too. She's 21. My okay. baby, I don't, I don't know if my baby would do it unless I'm like, hey, you want to try it? I don't think she would want to do it. But okay. if they want to do it, I'm for it. But I wouldn't push it on them. Like, okay. only thing, I don't even push what I do on them. I try to let them catch it on their own. Like, my youngest can edit videos. She could do photography. Like, my baby, my, my oldest, she does photography as a side hustle. And um, she also makes shirts. Like, when she graduated high school in 2020, I was going to give her some cash. You know, graduation, congratulations, whatever. And she was like, Daddy, I want to um, start making T-shirts. And I was like, okay. Well, I was like, instead of me giving you money for graduation, I'm going to start your business. I bought her a Cricut. I bought her a heat press. I bought her vinyl. I bought her a t-shirt transfer paper. And I bought her an ink, inkjet printer. So instead of me giving her money, I gifted her a business for graduation. Wow. And three, that, three years later, three, four years later, she's still going. That's amazing. Yeah. It's such a, that's such a great gift because, you know, a lot of kids will be like, oh, I want to do this. Or their parents will see them being creative, but they won't tap into that creativity. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you look at, I, I know I'm Cassie. saying, Cassie, Cassie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm sorry if I say that wrong, um, but Kasi is such a unique brand. Mm -hmm. um, would you call yourself a boutique brand? Or would you not want to label yourself a boutique brand? <laughs> it's funny you said that. I'm about to see you a clip when I did a whole little rant about that. No, <laughs> not a boutique brand. Because when you put boutique on it, you uh you put a ceiling on yourself. Because boutique is mean and small or or separate. Mm -hmm. No, we're a brand. You know what I'm saying? We're not as big as the biggest brand, but we're not as small as the smallest brand either. So putting saying we're a boutique brand is really almost like it's like a it's a secondary thing. 
-hmm. And I wouldn't put that restraint on myself because we, if there's no limit to where it can go. So no, I'm not a boutique brand. I'm a brand. Okay. And so when you look at the bigger brands, I always say the bigger brands started small, but they never called themselves a boutique brand either. So mm -hmm. when you look at the bigger brands, when someone comes to you and says, what are your cigars like? You know, they always want to compare to something. What mm -hmm. do you tell them? I don't give them a comparison. I say, you know, everybody has a different palate. And I just give them what I like. I like I like this one for this reason. I like this one the smooth. It's a little bit stronger. Gives me a little bit more strength on the smoke. My big red is a fuller. It's a medium uh, strength, a mild strength, but it's it's the one that produces the most smoke, and I think gives the smoothest draw. My Granny Reno is that tweener. It gives you a little bit of both, but it's it's, it's a shorter stick and an even smoke. So I give them what my what mine is. I don't compare it to nobody else because I ain't smoked enough cigars to tell you it's like this one, it's like this one, it's like that one. You know understand what I'm saying? Right. So I don't, and I don't even want to sell it to like I'm a, a a low grade version of that one. Right. You know I mean, people put us in a box, especially being like a black owned business. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even when you put that title, like I love being a black owned business, but you kind of make it seem like it's something different of a business. We're still a business. We're still a brand. So that's why I always, I never push like, oh, it's just like this. or No, it's just like the Detroit. And I explain to them how I like it. But what I taste and what I feel, you might have a totally different experience with it because right. we doesn't have the same palate. And right. that's kind of how I push it. Okay. I, you know what? I'm so glad that we got to sit down and that For we sure. got to talk. It is, it's such, it's, it's so different from East Coast where I am versus West Coast. Uh, well, I say West Coast, even though it's not really on the West Coast, but you know, it's, it's a difference in regions. And so it's always nice to sit down with someone who is not in my region to mm -hmm. learn about their region of cigars. And it's, it's, it's almost double for you because you're on the East Coast and the West Coast because you're Detroit and yeah. Arizona. Yep. So and I'm and I and I and I, oh, my biggest market is still still Detroit. Detroit and um South Bend Rocket would be pretty tough, but home gonna always be home. So that's my biggest support. So all my people back home, you know, I'm from a small city in Southwest Detroit called E Course. A lot of people just starting to get to know it because of the BMF series. They mm -hmm. talk about it so much. So I just be, you know, like I say, when I do my hashtag, just the kid from E Course, you know what I mean? So right. um I'm always gonna get the most love back home. Right. And, you know, and it expands to the West Coast. I'm getting love here. You know, saying shouts out to all my AZ people that's showing me love. But it's going to always be me or West. Yeah. And I you know what? I appreciate it. I cannot wait to get I'm a place in order because I need to try. Them and I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be anxiously awaiting my <laughs> when I put my order in. So yeah, just just <laughs> uh, just send me the address. We'll send you out a sampler. So you got I, you. don't even worry about it. I, I'm so happy for you. I, I'm going to check out your uh, podcast because, mm -hmm. and you'll see once I start watching something or listening to something, I'm just going to go through every episode. So yeah. <laughs> we have to get you, we have to get you on there so we can talk about your podcast. We can oh, cross promote. Yeah. Still sharp and still sharp and still. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And I I appreciate you saying because I know it's early out there. So oh, no, we good. I, I still my body is still on Detroit time. Okay. Because when we first moved here, we were still, you know, doing everything. My daughter was online, you know, it was, it was COVID. So right. my daughter was still online in Detroit school. So technically, I'm still on Detroit time. I wake up okay. every morning at like 5 a.m., which is 8 a.m. there. You know, so I've been okay. up. Right. So it, it is not it's not a big thing. Okay. A good thing we early, though, because it ain't got as hot. Because It's going to be hot in a couple more hours. There you go. And and it's yeah. already hot here. So <laughs> yeah, when I see them time slots, oh, yeah, I'm taking the earliest one available. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you for sitting down with me. Tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, they can find the website is ka-sicigars.com. Instagram is kasi.cigars. And um, we all over the web. Just Google us. We popping up and uh, we coming to a city near you, hopefully in a lounge. If not, a vendor event or if not, just come to the website. We ship out. We, we try to put you in the mail by the next day. Well, I'm going to be out in uh, Las Vegas sometime uh probably October is October. So, I mean, you know, once when I'm out West, I try to do a lot of different things. So hopefully I can meet up with you. And so are you, is it a, is it an event or are you just going on vacation? Nope. Just vacation. All right. Let me, let me know the dates. If the, the dates work, because from here to Vegas flight is like $60 round trip and it's only oh, like wow. a 40, okay. 40 minute flight. So cool. I can, sometimes I fly to Vegas and fly home the same night. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, well, all right. Yeah. But it's, it is a bet. <laughs> yeah, let me know. We'll definitely pull up. 
So thank you for sitting down with me today. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and keep it smoky, my friend. You already know. Appreciate you. <laughs> Bye-bye.